News, sports, weather. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins. Here's the top stories that we're working on this hour for you. Mineral Area College is getting high marks for campus safety. According to StateUniversity.com, Mineral Area College was ranked second among all Missouri colleges and universities. Director of Public Safety Mark Portraez says MAC has invested in the technologies needed to support public safety. We not only have the right technology, but we also have a culture that we have created here that involves all of the campus community members, faculty, staff, employees, students, visitors, in the public safety function. Everyone has a role they can play for themselves in public safety. I mean, it's not just one individual's responsibility. It's a responsibility we share and we work on together. Portraeus says MAC also benefits as the region's center for law enforcement training. We are also the crossroads for virtually every law enforcement agency in a multi-county region that comes through this area either for training or participates in various activities. So when you concentrate that much expertise, not only internally from the college itself, but from so many professional law enforcement agencies in the area, and all of that comes at this crossroads, you certainly benefit from that. Portraz also credits the cooperation between Max Public Safety Department and the area's law enforcement agencies they work with for the high campus safety rating. Well, now Dustin Kopp is back in the 18 Storm Tracker Center with our first forecast. Dustin, what's on? Good evening, Fred. Good evening, everybody. Temperatures right now, not too bad out there. 75 up in St. Louis, 78 in Ironton, 76 here in Farmington. Frederictown right now at 76 and Marble Hill at 78 degrees. This evening, we could see some thunderstorms throughout your evening hours. By 7 p.m., we're going to see a temperature around 74 by uh, 9 p.m., 68 and 67 by midnight. Now, those showers and thunderstorms are just going to be hit and miss throughout the evening hours. However, tomorrow morning, there is another chance of some thunderstorms at your bus stop with a temperature of 54 degrees. More details on your forecast coming up later in weather. A phone scam that hit Butler County back in February is migrating north. Piedmont Police Chief Richard Sanders says residents are getting called and being told that they've won a Mercedes-Benz and $3.5 million. But to collect, they have to do something first. To go into a Walmart store and pick up a special card. and In our area, the, the situation was uh, get $299 and we'll call you back and we'll tell you how to get your Mercedes Benz and $3.5 million. Chief Sanders says there's always one way you can be certain someone is trying to scam you. Anything that you have to take and get money to get money is a scam. Don't fall for that and don't give any information out pertinent to your checking account or credit card or Social Security card. Chief Sanders adds that the Missouri State Attorney General's office is currently investigating the scam. A Greenville man will be back in Wayne County Circuit Court April 25th. Floyd Duncan Sr. will appear before Judge Sanborn Ball on a motion hearing. Duncan is facing charges of assault in the first degree and armed criminal action. Now, according to the probable cause statement, Duncan is charged with stabbing Kelly Smith with a knife back on January 21st. If convicted on the assault charge, Duncan could receive a prison sentence of 10 to 30 years. Authorities have identified the body found in the Big River Sunday. St. Francis County Sheriff Dan Bullock says the man is 42-year-old James Mills of Bonterre. Coroner Jim Copeland says the cause of death will be determined when results from the toxicology test come back. He estimated the body had been in the water for a couple of weeks. When we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, the city of Farmington passes its financial checkup with flying colors. That story is coming up next on 18 Eyewitness News. The city of Farmington is in very good financial shape. At Monday night's city council meeting, members received the results of an independent audit which showed only a couple of minor bookkeeping changes and a clean opinion. Farmington Mayor Mitt Landrum says the council has run the city in a fiscally conservative manner. We have, tr we have tried to maintain reasonable and large uh, reserves through this, this decline 
and saw where many other public entities had to lay off firemen and policemen and so forth. We didn't ever have to do that, and we've been looking for ways actually during this recession to try to improve and expand our services to the citizens. Landrum says the audit suggested some controls in how certain funds were handled, and many of those suggestions have already been implemented. A longtime anchor for ESPN Sports Central will deliver the commencement address at the 2012 graduation ceremonies for Three Rivers College. President Dr. Devin Stevenson has announced that Linda Cohn will speak to the graduates at the May 20th ceremony. As one of the first full-time female sports anchors, Cohn is recognized for her 20-year career with ESPN and has appraised uh, and appeared regularly on Sports Central since 1992. St. Francis County Democrats will meet Thursday evening to begin the process of electing delegates to the state Democratic Convention. Now, during the meeting, delegates and alternates will be elected to attend the next step of the 2012 selection process. The meeting is set for the third floor courtroom of the St. Francis County Courthouse on Thursday at 730. Well, you'll have the opportunity in May to have your child go through MoChip, the Missouri Child Identification and Protection Program. Deputy Jason Leesk, resource operator for the Fredericktown R1 School District, says MoChip starts with parents filling out information about their children. Then the child goes through a number of stations. Stations, we have a fingerprint station where they fingerprint the child. We have a photograph station where they photograph the child's face and left ear. Then we also have a dent, uh, dental bite plate where they bite down on it on a little piece of plastic and it leaves their dental impression, DNA, and also canine sent to. However, Least says authorities do not keep the information that they collect. And then all the information is collected onto a CD. We do not keep any information. And then the CD is actually given to the family. And so if your child ever goes missing, all you do is you bring a closed envelope, sealed envelope, to the local FBI, the local law enforcement or state patrol, give that to them, and they download it directly to Amber Alert. Least says more than 141,000 Missouri children have gone through the program. Your child can go through the MoChip program May the 5th or May the 12th at the Fredericktown High School. The program is free of charge and sponsored by the Masonic Lodge number 110. And welcome back. As we head into this evening, through the next couple days, there is a chance of isolated thunderstorms. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler than they have been. However, they will still be above normal. And this weekend is looking fantastic, as you can tell by the capital letters in the word fantastic. Here in southeast Missouri, temperatures, they're in the 70s. It's nice out there right now. 75 in Rolla, 78 here in Marble Hill, Cape Girardeau at 76, 75 in St. Louis, Ironton right now at 78 degrees. Here at the station, we have a temperature of 76 under a partly to mostly cloudy sky. There are some thunderstorms out there uh, in some areas, but right now it feels like 76 with current dew point of 53. Humidity right now at 43% and north-northeast wind at 3 miles per hour. What's in store for your day on Thursday? Well, we get another shot of some thunderstorms throughout the day. Like I said, it's going to be hit and miss. We will continue to have that chance of thunderstorms for the next couple of days. But uh, like I said, if you go outside and you, you see the sunshine, well, dust and light to you, no, there is just a chance of some thunderstorms. So for tonight, lows look like this. 52 up in St. Louis, 53 in Ironton, Fredertown 51, 52 in Marble Hill, 56 over in Rolla, and Ellington will see a low of 55. So for tonight, we'll see a low around 50 to 55 degrees, partly cloudy, Light to variable winds. There is a chance of a thunderstorm here and there. Don't be surprised if one pops up. Tomorrow, however, we're a little cooler than we were today with a high of 75 degrees. Isolated thunderstorms are possible. East wind 5 to 10. The next several days are looking like this. Another chance of some thunderstorms on Friday with a high of 79, 78, and partly sunny on Saturday. Saturday is going to be a nice day. On Sunday, 83 with sunshine, plenty of it. Monday, a little bit cooler, back in the 70s, 77 for your overall high with partly sunny sky. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, temperatures in the low to mid 60s, much cooler than we've seen in the last several days. Tuesday will be closer to our normal temperature, which is about 62 degrees right now. Both days, plenty of sunshine. Now the check of our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri on Saturday. We'll see partly sunny skies with a 78 degree temperature for your overall high. 
on Sunday, the pick day over the weekend. Plenty of sunshine with a high of 83. That's check of your storm tracker weather forecast. Fred, back. This is 18 Eyewitness News Sports. In high school baseball action from Tuesday in Marble Hill, the Woodland Cardinals defeated the Clearwater Tigers 10-7. Clearwater got the scoring started in the top of the first with two runs aided by an RBI double by Malachi Ezell. Woodland would come back in the bottom of the second with an RBI double by Aaron Yunt that plated two runs to tie the game. Things would stay like that until the fifth when Clearwater would regain the advantage, scoring three ones with the help of five walks and an RBI base hit by Stephen Carter. In the bottom of the sixth, Woodland scored eight runs to blow the game open and drop the Tigers to four and two on the spring season. Clearwater is next in action Thursday on the road at Naylor, while Woodland will host Puxico. And other scores from Tuesday, Valley Catholic defeated Bismarck 12-1. Farmington survived Potosi 6-5. North County was one run better than St. Genevieve 2-1. Kingston had no trouble with Valley Caledonia 18-0. Central won easily over Fredericktown 15-1. It was West County 8, Arcadia Valley 3. Cape Notre Dame over Perryville 4-2. And DeSoto defeated St. Clair 13-3. Brian Elliott's third consecutive shutout gave the Blues a 3-0 victory over Nashville on Tuesday and their 15th shutout of the season, tying the NHL post-expansion record with five games still remain in the regular season. Almost forgotten after the sellout crowd calmed down was that the Blues increased their NHL best point total to 105, staying two points ahead of the New York Rangers, who won on Tuesday. The one-game stop at Scott Trade Center was successful as the Blues won a franchise record 30th home game this season. But it was brief as the club will go back on the road to meet the Chicago Blackhawks on Thursday. The push for Alan Craig recovering from mid-November knee surgery to be on the opening day roster for next Wednesday's game in Miami is over. It appears Craig's workload in Florida will be concentrated in minor league level appearances. If Craig would appear in a big league exhibition game between now and the start of the season, it would have an impact on how much backdated time the Cardinals would have if they put him on the disabled list at the start of the season as expected. The Cardinals, in theory, could put Craig on the DL backdated to March 26th and have him available as early as April 10th if he did not play in a game in spring training. And while St. Louis Rams owner Stan Kroenke made the final cut as a bidder for the Los Angeles Dodgers, he lost out to a a group that includes former Los Angeles Lakers star Magic Johnson and longtime baseball executive Stan Kasten, who agreed to buy the Dodgers for a record $2 billion. The price would shatter the mark for a sports franchise. Steven Ross paid $1.1 billion for the NFL's Miami Dolphins in 2009. Chief Executive Officer of the financial services firm Guggenheim Partners, Mark Walter, would become the controlling owner. The deal is subject to approval in federal bankruptcy court. And that's a look at sports. We'll be back with today's Your Live segment right after this on 18 Eyewitness News. Well, I'll tell you what, Dustin, Stacy Johnson kind of hit it on the head talking about workers with fire in their bellies and a little mm -hmm. snow on top of our heads after 50. But, hey, you know, I, I think if I didn't work here at the stations, I don't think I would have any trouble going out and finding a job in my related field. Do you? No, I don't. I don't think so. And I don't think I would would too much either. Now, you, if he was talking about gray hair, I mm -hmm. don't think 50 has anything to do with it. I'm in my 20s and I've got gray hair. So yeah. it... Uh, it, it doesn't matter what age you are. They make some stuff in the bottle take care of that gray yeah, hair. Yeah, I know, but though. my wife won't let me do that, so <laughs> we'll just uh, go with gray hair. Prematurely gray. Yeah. What's the weather look like? The weather is uh, looking nice tonight. We're going to see temperatures around the 50-degree mark, partly cloudy. There is uh, some chances of thunderstorms throughout the evening hours and tomorrow. Don't be surprised to walk outside and see the sunshine and be like, well, Dustin lied to me. <laughs> You know, it's supposed to be storming, but uh, it, it's just going to be hit and miss throughout the, the day. Yesterday, we're, we were thinking that we're going to see more in the way of thunderstorms today, right. but we didn't. Um, it was, again, just a hit and miss type of situation. But today turned out to be a nice oh, day. Beautiful in the 80s. I'll tell yeah. you what, can't beat it. That does it for our newscast tonight. Thank you for joining us, folks. We'll be back later on this evening with more, and then tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for the early morning edition of 18 Eyewitness News. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. News Watch is next.